All right, so which one of these answers right here is the correct solution to this basic math problem? Well, this should be pretty easy to figure out if you have strong basic math skills. As a matter of fact, you don't even need to use your calculator. So put your calculator away and let's take a look at the problem. We have 2 to the third power times 5 squared plus 3 squared. All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how to solve this problem without using a calculator. But uh, before we get started, if you need comprehensive, detailed help in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is our problem and here is our choices. So A is 460, B is 1025, C is 2460, and D is 6272. All right, so let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer here is D, 6272. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and A+, plus, a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of basic mathematics. So congratulations. Now, again, I wanted you to do this problem without a calculator. So if you got the right answer without using a calculator, that tells me that you know how to evaluate powers, you know how to multiply, you know how to add, and you know a thing or two about the order of, uh, order of operations. So that is outstanding. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution, and don't despair if you got this wrong. I'm going to fully explain this, but uh, first, I need to apologize for something. So some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what's the matter? What did you do? Uh, well, uh, this is what happened. The other day, I posted this video, but I made a mistake. Yes, indeed, I can make mistakes as well when it comes to math. Now, um, you know, one of the things I harp on in my videos is to really double check and triple check. Uh, you know, for me, I think um, what's going on is sometimes I produce so much content. I got a lot of other projects going on. And as much as I try to be careful on some things, some things just kind of slip uh, past me. And what I did the other day is I posted not this prom. I actually solved this prom, but the prom I had uh, typed uh, out had a cubed here, all right? So instead of uh, this being a two, this exponent, it was a three and it confused a lot of people. So I took down that video. I'm trying to make up for it right now by posting a, uh, you know, actual correct, you know, uh, problem and solution. So if you saw that, I apologize. But, uh, you know, I bring that up as a reminder that, you know, we all can make mistakes in anything we do. The key is to really try to limit uh, our uh, errors and things like that. And that just goes to the power of focus and double checking and triple checking. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. So here is our problem. Now, if you don't know how to do this math problem and you're looking at, uh, you know, you're taking a test, you're looking at this problem on a quiz or an exam, well, what should you do? Just take a guess. Be like, I don't know, this looks pretty good to me. Never, ever, ever leave a math question blank unless you are going to get penalized for a wrong answer. And that could be the case on some tests like the SAT or ACT. But even in those cases, typically you don't get a full point off. They'll take like a quarter point or an eighth of a point or, or, or you know, half a point, whatever the case is. But if you're going to guess, it's often uh, times, uh, you know, uh, worth it to see if you can kind of eliminate an answer or two. Now, what you could do here, if you're so inclined, you could be like, well, maybe uh, I could just do some quick estimating here. So two to the third power is what? Well, that's two times two times two or eight. So you could kind of round that up to 10. And now you have five squared, which is what? Well, that's five times five or 25. So you can have 25, but we have to square this. Okay, so we have 25 squared. So you're gonna have to kind of estimate this value and multiply it by 10. But if you kind of played around with this for a little bit and you just kind of did some estimating, you would see that this is kind of the only reasonable answer. Okay, so that is one approach. So, uh, you know, but instead of, you know, wasting the time, not wasting the time, but taking the time to uh, estimate the answer here, 
probably the best thing to do is just simply do the math. And in order to do the math, we're going to have to know a thing or two about, you know, basic math concepts like the order of operations and uh, how to find powers, et cetera, et cetera. So here we're going to have to figure out how to find the power uh, of two to the third power. Okay. And of course, I just showed you what that is because we have a power here. We have a power here and we have a power here. But we do have multiplication and addition, and we do, um, again, because we have multiplication here, we have parentheses, we have addition, and we have powers, we have various mathematical operations. So we need to know the correct order to do this problem, and that brings me to the order of operations, because this is probably the most confused part of basic math. So here is a lovely acronym. This thing you should kind of put in your long-term math memory storage. And uh, this little acronym is known as PEMDAS, right? So P-E-M-D-A-S. And there's a lovely little mnemonic memory aid here that goes along with this. That is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So uh, these letters obviously stand for something. Well, this is a checklist and it goes from left to right in order for us to uh, follow the correct order of operation. So when we have a math problem, we have more than one mathematical operation. Now, in math, things like addition, subtraction, these are called mathematical operators. So we have a multiplication, division, uh, powers, parentheses. We need to know the correct order because if we go in different orders, we will generate different values. There's only one correct order to take, and uh, that correct order is by following this little uh, checklist right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the P stands for parentheses. So you're going to start from the left and you're going to go to the right. And if you have any one of these uh, things to do, well, you're going to have to stop and, you know, address it from left to right. Okay, so P stands for parentheses, but uh, not only these kind of parentheses, these type of things like brackets or squiggly brackets, really the P stands for grouping symbols. In math, if we have like 1 times 7 divided by 3, we can group this in different ways. If I put parentheses around 1 times 7, well, that's one problem. Or maybe I could put uh, brackets around 7 divided by 3. Well, that's another problem. Okay, so that's what grouping symbols do for us in math. Now, sometimes you have uh, multiple sets of grouping symbols in a math problem. So you might have parentheses inside of brackets. So what you do there is you finish, uh, well, you go to the innermost parentheses, do all that math, and just kind of work your way out from uh, inside uh, out okay and you're not really done with this step until all the math that is inside of those parentheses is taken care of all right so now let's go go ahead and talk about e e stands for exponents so when you have something like two to the third power this little three up here is the exponent part of the power so you basically you can think of the e as uh, handling any power situations and obviously uh, we have a few different power situations in this problem. Okay, so let's talk about M, D, A, and S. First of all, I'm just going to tell you what M, D, A, A, and S stand for. So M is multiplication, D stands for division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. Now, most of you might be saying, I know what you're going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You're going to do all the multiplication, and then you'll move on to all the division. So in other words, we'll always do multiplication first because of uh, you know, it's coming uh, first on our checklist from left to right, and then division, addition, and subtraction. Well, that's not the way it works, okay? So some of you might be very, you know, frustrated. What are you talking about? You just told me this is a checklist. Well, actually, it works this way, okay? So the P and the E part work uh, this way on this uh, order of operations checklist, but M and D is actually one group. So it's multiplication or division whatever you see first from left to right. So if you have multiplication and then division or division and then multiplication, you're going to uh, do whatever you see from left to right. So again, if you have both multiplication and division in a problem, you have to assess, hey, what, am I, what do I see first from left to right? That's what you do first. And addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so let's put this all together and apply our knowledge of the order of operations uh, to this problem. Okay, so now we are always thinking about PEMDAS, right? So this is in our lovely uh, brain. Now, if you need to uh, write this on a piece of paper, that's uh, perfectly fine, but you're kind of thinking, all right, do I have parentheses? Well, obviously we have parentheses right here. Okay, so what does this mean? 
Well, it means we have to do the math inside of the parentheses. Okay, so perfect. So do we have any more parentheses inside the parentheses? No, but do we have any exponents? Do we have any powers? Indeed, we do right there, five squared. So we're definitely gonna have to take care of that exponent part before we do addition. So five squared is where we're going to start. Okay, so what's five squared? Well, five squared is five times five. So remember with powers, the way it works is this number here is saying multiply this number, this is called the base times itself this many times. So five times five is 25. If you had two to the fourth power, okay, this is saying multiply two by itself four times, right? So hopefully, uh, you know, all of you out there know how to evaluate simple powers and exponents, but that's what that means. And I want to explain this because some of you out there may need a quick review. Okay, so five squared is 25. So we're just taking one step at a time. So now we have two to the third power times five squared. Again, that's uh, 25 plus three squared. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, why write out all these steps? I know this is gonna be 25 plus three. Well, you wanna write out each step so your teacher can understand what you're doing. And if you, uh, you know, uh, make a mistake, like I made a mistake in this previous problem, you can go back and review, oh, that's where I made my mistake. Okay, so uh, here is where we're at. But remember, uh, for PEMDAS, we're not done with the parentheses part of uh, uh, PEMDAS, right? Let me just write this out here again, P-E-M-D-A-S. We're not done with the P part until we're done with everything in the parentheses. So we need to continue to march forward. So 25 plus three is what? Well, 25 plus three is 28. Now we are done with the parentheses part of the problem. So that means we're down to what? Well, we have multiplication. This right here, two to the third power outside of this parenthesis, this actually is multiplication right there. So we have multiplication and we have power. So don't get confused here and be like, well, maybe I need to take this power, multiply it by this number and then take care of this power. This is where people can get in trouble. We need to be very disciplined about this. So um, now at this point though, you could take this power two to the third and take this power separately. That's not going to affect uh, the outcome of the answer. So let's go ahead and do the more challenging part and that is to uh, find 28 squared, right? So 28 squared means what? We're gonna take 28 and multiply it by itself one time. So 28 times 28. And remember, we're not going to use a calculator. So we're gonna do some good old fashioned arithmetic here. And this is me. Uh, showing off uh, what I learned way back, I don't know, maybe like 1976 or seven or something like that. It was a long time ago. And I unfortunately don't remember my teacher's names. I may remember some of them. Uh, I don't remember all of them. And I wish I did because someone taught me how to do this math. That someone was a teacher. So if you have basic math skills or if you have pretty good math skills, you know, you were taught by that. And I'll tell you something. Uh, for those of you out there, maybe some of you, uh, maybe a few of you are thinking, you know what, I would love to teach math or I'd love to teach science or something. Boy, I tell you, the world desperately needs great uh, teachers. So please, please, you know, I would encourage you to, um, you know, consider teaching as a career. It is challenging, but it's also very rewarding. All right, so this is the way I'm doing 28 times 28, just some old school arithmetic the way I learned it. Now you could have um, uh, did this in a different manner. They teach uh, you know, multiplication, addition. There's all different methods and techniques that you could um, use to get the right answer. As long as, you got the, uh, the right, the, as long as you got the right answer, that's what counts, right? So eight times eight, that's 64. So I'm gonna put four, carry the six. Eight times two, that's 16, plus six is 22. So I'm done with that. So now I'm gonna put a little X here or zero. And then I'm gonna go two times eight, that's 16 or six, carry the one, two times two, that's four, plus one, that's five. Now I'm gonna add down on the column manner and I get my lovely answer, 784. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I've been on YouTube for a long time and I plan on uh, staying on YouTube um, for a long time. You know, YouTube is a fantastic platform and pretty much I'm posting videos every day. My goal is typically to post about two videos per day Sometimes I uh, do a little bit more and sometimes I'll maybe go down to one. It all depends on what's going on in my life. But whatever I post, I try to get it right. And when I don't get it right, like I made that little error with that uh, problem the other day, 
well, I try to redeem myself by just, you know, uh, pushing forward. Now, the main um, thing about my channel is that I try to cover basic math to advanced math, kind of like up to calculus and everything in between. But uh, really, my channel is about encouraging people to stick with math. Even if you make a mistake, even if you struggle with math, you can be successful if you don't give up. But uh, what you need is time, you need commitment, and most importantly, you need comprehensive detailed math instruction. So if you need help in mathematics, uh, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And for this particular um, uh, problem, what we're working on right here, this is basic math. You might want to check out my math foundations course or my math skills rebuilder course or maybe even my pre-algebra course. But these two courses, I think, are the best because I really get into some uh, basic arithmetic. But uh, let's go ahead and finish up this problem so we know what 28 squared is. That's 28 times 28. So that's 784. And now uh, we have to take care of of the power part of this problem. Okay, so we need to evaluate two to the third power. That is what? Well, that is eight. And so now we have eight times 784. And uh, again, we're back to doing some old school arithmetic. So you can just go 784 times uh, eight and do that lovely math. And when, if you do this right, you'll end up with 6272. So let's suppose you don't remember how to uh, multiply um, you know, uh, single digit numbers by three digit numbers or two digit numbers by two digit numbers, no big deal. Check out my math foundations or my math skill rebuild a course. I teach you all those basic number uh, operations, number skills, because typically we, you know, uh, don't really do this stuff anymore. We don't do hand calculations, arithmetic, because we have our calculators. But I think it's a good idea to brush up on those basic math skills. In other words, how do you work with decimals? Can you divide decimals, multiply decimals? Most people couldn't, not because uh, you know they're not smart enough or they didn't learn it well, they just been away from it so long. But uh, you know what, it's good for your brain, it's just good for your overall you know, math aptitude by getting, uh, you know, getting back into some arithmetic, okay? Uh, a lot of people are, don't give arithmetic or basic math uh, enough respect you do need to really think about these basic math problems. And that word basic, I don't, I'm not even so sure I really like that word. Um, you know, it's foundational math, you know, because it's all relative. But here is one thing I do know. If you're going to be successful in algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and even calculus, you got to have a strong foundation. That's why you need to kind of review, you know, your basic math skills, okay? All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.